My name is Miles Kellerman, and I'm an assistant professor at Leiden University's Institute of Security and Global Affairs. Today, I'll be presenting a new working paper for DC FinTech Week, which is titled, License Detection Agents, The Case for Financial Crime Bounty Hunters. This paper centers on a pressing issue of public policy, specifically, a collective failure to detect financial crime. Banks and other financial institutions spend hundreds of billions of dollars every year on financial crime compliance. Yet, it has been estimated that less than 1% of money laundering is actually detected. We also failed to detect two thirds of corporate fraud and detection rates are equally poor for other types of white collar crime like market abuse. There are many contributing factors to these failures, but the primary issue is that we rely on private firms to monitor their own customers. Regulators around the world have outsourced this task to the private sector, requiring that banks, exchanges, and other institutions perform surveillance on their customers and submit reports of suspicious activity. This system is often referred to as the gatekeeper model. And there is currently a push to extend these gatekeeper obligations to a wider scope of companies, including attorneys and private equity firms. The problem is that the gatekeeper model is not working. Gatekeepers have incurred over $60 billion in fines for failing to fulfill their anti-money laundering obligations. And they've often faced criminal prosecution for performing ineffective surveillance. The reason for these failures is simple. Gatekeepers are conflicted. Policing your own clients is generally bad for business. And as we have seen in countless enforcement actions, there is a strong temptation for gatekeepers to look the other way when their clients engage in suspicious activity. The question is, what is the alternative? One option would be to shift these responsibilities to regulators. We could allow regulatory agencies to directly surveil our financial transactions. And unlike gatekeepers, regulators would have strong positive incentives to perform effective monitoring. But this approach raises serious privacy concerns. Many of us would object, understandably, to the idea of the government monitoring our every financial move. What this paper proposes is a third way. It advocates for the creation of a new class of private firms who are licensed to surveil transactions and rewarded by regulators for reporting suspicious activity. I refer to these actors as licensed detection agents or LDAs. The LDA program would flip the perverse incentives of the gatekeeper model, and it would create a new competitive market for detection. In so doing, the program would provide regulators with a new and more effective method of generating actionable information on criminal schemes. If we take a step back, there is substantial historical precedent for these types of systems. One important example in the US is the False Claims Act. The False Claims Act empowers private persons, known as relators, to file lawsuits against other private persons defrauding the US government. If they are successful, they are then entitled to a percentage share of any subsequent penalties. From 1987 to 2023, the False Claims Act has been hugely profitable, both for the government and relators. In inflation-adjusted numbers, the government has paid relators about $12 billion in return for $72 billion and successfully obtained settlements and judgments. If we were to think of the False Claims Act as an investment, the government has made a return of 490%. But the False Claims Act is not the only example. Many countries have also successfully implemented whistleblower incentivization programs. And we can also think about other approaches like wildlife bounty hunting. Additionally, many tech companies have implemented so-called bug bounty hunting programs in which private persons can receive rewards if they spot and report software vulnerabilities. The LDA program is inspired by these previous examples, but it does not fit neatly into existing categories. It really represents a new approach one combining elements of whistleblower incentivization programs and traditional bounty hunting. So how exactly would this work? The LDA program would create a new class of firms who are licensed to surveil transactions and rewarded for reporting suspicious activity. Unlike whistleblowing, LDAs would not be operating in secret, nor would they be undertaking the great personal risk of reporting on their own employers. Rather, these independent firms would obtain regulatory authorization to surveil financial transactions for the purpose of detecting criminal schemes. So how would LDAs access the data? Where possible, they would obtain transactional data directly from regulators. If that's not possible, 
gatekeepers like banks and exchanges would be obligated to make the customer data available to LDAs for the purpose of surveillance. LDAs would then perform monitoring and submit in-depth reports to regulators when they observe suspicious transactional patterns. In return, LDAs would receive two types of payments. The first payment would be a one-time reward for the report itself. And the second larger payment would be a percentage share of any penalties or seizures obtained as a result of their reports. Now the LDA program is not a cure-all for financial crime and it features risks which have to be mitigated. And this is something I talk about more in the paper. What the program would do is flip the perverse incentives of the current gatekeeper model. And in so doing, it would provide regulators with a new method of generating actionable information on suspicious activity. Thank you very much for your attention and please do consult the paper if you would like to learn more. Thank you.